Today in our 2017 Volkswagen Golf, we'll be having a look at and installing the Kurt Powered Taillight Converter with 4 pole flat trailer connector, part number C59236. Now here's what our wiring looks like installed. Now our wiring is designed to be stored inside our vehicle when it's not in use. Now one of the reasons you're going to want this converter style that you have to splice in over other options available on the market is many Volkswagen Golfs on the market use pulse width modulated wiring in their tail light systems, which are not compatible with many plug and play options. Now we'll show you how to get it installed. All right, to begin our install, we'll open our rear hatch. All right, now we'll take out all of our floor coverings. And make it easier to see, we'll take out our cargo cover here. Now the center trim piece here, we're going to remove this by pulling up on it. Okay, now we have a torque screw down here in this recessed pocket that we're going to need to remove. Okay, we have another one up here that's in the hinge area for our luggage cover. Now this pocket over here, we'll just grab this and pull it on up. And we can grab our interior panel now and start pulling it away. We don't need to take it all the way off, just enough so we can pull the carpet back behind it. Okay, we have two plastic retainers that hold our carpet into place. Use a trim panel tool and we'll pop these out. Okay, with our driver side panels loose, we have access to our tail light connector. So we'll repeat the same process on the passenger side. All right, so we need to remove our tail light bulb here partially. In order to do that, there's a black tab right here. We'll press on it and pull back. We won't be able to remove it all the way but we'll be able to rotate it now to gain access to the lock tab for our connector. So we'll slide this red tab back, we'll press it on this black tab here, and pull apart. All right, now that we have our panels apart, you can see I've already made our connections here, but I'm gonna to explain to you how we came across the wires that we're going to use to use our connections. We're only splicing into one wire on each side. The one that we're working with on the driver's side is this black and red wire. And this is where we tied in our yellow wire for our left turn signal and left brake light. Now the reason we're only doing one connection on each side of the vehicle is because this vehicle has what is called a pulse width modulated system and what that basically means is you're not seeing full 12 volts typically. Everything's switched on via low voltage input from a computer around five volts. So I'll explain how this works. I got the positive lead of my multimeter. You're going to need a quality multimeter for this. I'm gonna to go to the back side of my tail light connector and back probing the red and black wire. If you back probe something, you don't damage the connector, so you still have good electrical connection. The negative lead of my multimeter, I'm just going to ground out on our chassis here. Now, if we look at my multimeter, you can see I'm registering half a volt. Now, this is because I have my headlights turned on right now. So what this is doing is it's bypassing some of the power from the taillight circuit over to our brake light and turn signal circuit, giving us a half volt which isn't enough to turn your lights on, but it is enough to confuse your module that controls your four pole flat converter. So I'm gonna turn my turn signal on now and we'll test for more voltage. Still back probing the red and black wire and with the turn signal on, you can see it's going to five volts whenever it flashes. So we know that's our turn signal circuit. Now I'll turn our brake on and test it again. We're reading basically a full 12 volts which is full power output for the light, and that's what we're looking for here. 
Now we'll repeat the same process for the passenger side to find out which one is our turn signal and our brake light wire. And when we did that on the passenger side, we found that that is the purple and black wire. So we made our connection with our green wire here for our turn signal for the passenger side. Now, because we only need to have the two connections to our vehicle's wiring, and that this is a combined multiplex system, our brown wire here, which is typically for our tail light circuit, and our red wire here, which is for our stop light circuit, we combine those with the white wire, which is our ground wire. We use a heat shrink buck connector for all of our connections. We have these available on our website. And our ground wire, we grounded behind a 10 millimeter nut, which is a factory ground point right here. I stuck our double sided tape to the back side of our converter box here. And now I'm gonna stick this to a flat surface, nice and firm. Okay, right where I'm pointing, we have a grommet. This is behind our carpet on the driver's side. We'll just grab this and pull it on out. We make a modification to it. Okay, now we'll take the grommet. This is the bottom of it that faces the bottom of the car. Here's the top of it. I'm gonna go through the bottom with the drill bit here. Okay, now we'll take the other end of our black wire and we'll pass it through that hole we just drilled. Okay, now we'll stick the end of our black wire through the hole where the grommet was, and we'll feed it all the way down until the grommet is back in place. And we'll push the grommet back in. Okay, with the black wire coming off our module, we combined with the black wire that, with our kit, with the butt connector. All right, we went ahead and routed our power wire from where it leaves our grommet here towards the front of the vehicle, making sure we avoided any moving parts or sources of heat. So I followed along the subframe connector here, zip tied to it, it goes over the rest of our subframe, comes out over our subframe here. I have it zip tied to what could be an exhaust hanger on some vehicles. Ours is a GTI model, so the exhaust may or may not be different than your vehicle. I go through this slot here in the lower control arm. It's right by the pivot point, so it doesn't matter. This won't flex very much. Then I have it zip tied to the cable in a few spots. Then it goes underneath our plastic shield here. Have it zip tied at the end of it here, so to keep it in place. And it comes out right here. This is our pull wire, which I dropped down from our engine compartment. And I have our wire taped to it, so we can pull this up into our engine bay now. And here's our pull wire, and we'll pull it on up. Okay, we have our power wire zipped up here to our battery cables, just to help keep it from falling. Now we'll lift open our flap here that covers our battery, and I'll just tuck it down here out of the way for right now. This post here is our positive post. That's where we need to make our connection. So we'll cut off our excess wire right here. And we'll strip back some insulation from the wire. Drop on our butt connector. And we'll crimp it on down. Take our fuse holder here. Strip off some insulation. Stick that in the other end of the butt connector. Okay, on this other side of our fuse holder, we'll strip off some insulation. Stick on our rain terminal. Now we just need to make our connection to the positive terminal by removing that 10 millimeter nut. Okay, we'll slide our ring terminal on over that stud and re-secure our nut. Okay, now we'll take a provided 10 amp fuse and install it into our fuse holder. And close our dust cover on up. All right, with all of our connections made in the back here, we can reinstall our panels. 
Make sure a weather stripping sits on top of all our panels like it's supposed to. Okay, we're using a four pole flat trailer tester to test our wiring. We have these available on our website as part number I26 if you'd like to purchase one. We'll start by turning on our headlights. And as you can see, our tail light and running light function on our trailer would be working. Now we'll do a left turn signal. That's working as well. Followed by a right turn signal. That's working too. Now we'll step on the brakes. That's working as well too. We'll combine our brakes with our turn signals at the same time to make sure they operate properly. It's good there on that side and good on that side. Now we've verified all of our functions are working properly. And that completes our look at and installation of the Kurt Power Tail Light Converter with four pole flat trailer connector, part number C59236 on our 2017 Volkswagen Golf.